welcome to You So You. My name's Zoe and this is my channel all about the craft bits and pieces I get up to. I knit, I sew, I spin on a drop spindle, I dabble in weaving from time to time and anything else that takes my crafty fancy. But today we're looking at what I've been working on in September so grab a brew, put your feet up and let's get started. So welcome, welcome back to any returning viewers and to any new viewers a very warm welcome to you. As I mentioned in the opening to the video, we're looking at what I've been working on in September this week. So uh, before we get started, you'll notice that I've not prettified my blanket here. And that's because the cat, who has only just decided to move, was sleeping there. Um, so we'll, we'll just cope with things looking a little bit higgledy-piggledy today. But that's fine. It's not what we're here for anyway. This is not a how to tidy your home video. So let's get started with what I am wearing. So I have on two things that are me made. I have this t-shirt, which is a forget-me-not pattern. I believe it's the iris tee. It's the one with the pleated sleeves. Um, so I'll, if I remember, I'll put up on the, the screen the name of the pattern because I'm not, it either Viola or Iris. It's one of the two. Um, but yeah, it's the one with the pleated sleeves. And I'm also wearing the long line Cardi by Hohi Locatelli which I knitted last year, I believe, and it does get an awful lot of wear. It's easy to sling on, it's an open front cardigan, so it just goes on over everything. And um, so yeah, really handy. Took a bit of time to, to knit, because it's lots and lots and lots of uh, stocking stitch, but it was a good reading while knitting project. Uh, the yarn it's knit out of is a 100% merino that I dyed myself, and I'm having a bit of an experiment with the dye pots. Um, so yeah, so that's what I'm wearing. Let's move on two finished objects and we'll start with the knitting finished object so this is my pair of west yorkshire spinners nutcracker socks uh, nutcracker was one of their christmas colorways i think it was last christmas could be wrong and uh, but yeah, west yorkshire spinners do a christmas colorway each year i tend to get the sparkly version of it i don't know if the sparkles are picking up the light on camera today or not sometimes they do sometimes they don't and i've just worked a two by four rib across the top of the foot and up the leg. I work my socks toe up two at a time, a magic loop, and um, that's just my preference. And so fairly straightforward for most of the sock. And I've done a heel flap and gusset um, for the heel on this one. Um, I've not done a toe up heel flow, flo flo heel flow, heel flap and gusset before. Um, so I did have to look up some guidelines online uh, to work out how to do it. Not tried them on yet. Looking at how they're fitting on the sock blockers though, uh, there's a bit of space there which is good. This is my slightly smaller pair of sock blockers. I have an acrylic pair somewhere. Not entirely sure where I put them this morning. So uh, we're on the old wooden ones which are just a little bit fractionally smaller or they feel fractionally smaller. They might not be, they feel fractionally smaller. Um, so we've got a bit of space at the back of the foot here. So I think they should fit fine, uh, but I'll be trying them on later to keep my toes warm for the rest of the day. So we'll put those to one side where the cat is now vacated. Uh, and we'll show you my other finished object. Now, I say finished object. It's finished in as much as the crafting bit of it has been done. But there are some finishing touches to do before I put it on display. And that is my needle felted pumpkin picture. This was great fun to, to do. It's a crafty kit company kit. I still need to trim the black felt a bit and I'm going to put some other felt or some other fabric on the back to stick and stitch it down um, so that it doesn't shift in the frame and fall out. The instructions have you just to cut it to the um, hoop, but I'm, I'm, I want a little bit more security than that. So I have an autumnal picture to go up on display at some point when I get round to doing the finishing touches, which means it might not go up till next year. But you know what? That's okay. It was very relaxing to do. It took about an afternoon. Um, they rec the kit reckons about two hours. So yeah, that's, that sounds about right. And um, you're just stabbing stuff. So if you've had a bad day or a bad week, needle felting, stab stuff uh, without anyone getting hurt. I did break a few needles, um, I broke a couple of needles doing this. Needle felting needles are quite delicate, 
Um, so if you don't quite get the angle right or if you use a bit too much force then they can snap. Um, but I had some in stash anyway from my uh, advent calendar last year, which was the Crafty Kit Company advent calendar. Uh, so I was able to finish the project. To give you a sense of what it looks like on the back before I finish it off, that's that's what you see that's been stabbed through to connect the, the fibre onto to the felt. Um, so yes, I highly recommend for stress relief, needle felting. Uh, so yes, I'll put that to one side. And uh, that's my finished object. So let's take a look at my works in progress. Now, I do have one work in progress that I'm not going to show you until next month. And that's because it's to do with the birthday that's at the beginning of October. So it hasn't been given out yet. Um, well, obviously it hasn't been finished yet, so of course it hasn't been given out. But um, yeah, it won't be given to the person who's receiving it for another couple of weeks. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll show, look at that one next month. I just have to remember to take a picture of it before I give it away. So yeah, so that's I'm just going to sit over that way and wait for the October roundup. But I have been working on a couple of yarny projects. I've got one knitting and one that's currently crochet but will be knitting by the time you see it in October. So let's start with the knitting project. Now uh, this is the Wellsbury sweater, um, which is an and other knits design. And it's a bit of a, an unusual construction. I am currently working on the left front here you will have seen the back previously so here's the back so you knit down one half of either the front or the back and then as you're working the other half you join in the middle so I've got as far as connecting the other front and starting working down there I'm knitting this in Holst Garn Super Soft with some drops um, over here, silk mohair um, for floof and I'm using four colours, uh, working them in a gradient. Now, I have noticed, now that I've got this far down the front, I have noticed that one of these sections is not like the other. You can probably see that this side here is a bit thicker than this side here. I noticed this when I got to the instruction that said, rather than measuring, count your rows to ensure that you get the same length and uh, yeah somehow when I was working this side I've picked up too many rows in the middle and we're talking about 10 or 11 extra rows so it's about an inch um, which could be problematic I'm leaving it for the moment um, because I would have to undo the cast off the ribbing put this side onto a needle and rip back to before where the error was made and then rework it. So I'm going to wait until I finish the front before I decide whether or not I'm going to do that. Because if I make the same mistake on this side, when I sell the side seams, I can make that work. Um, I'm not looking forward to ripping back mohair. But I also don't really want an extra inch in the back because that'll cause bunching um, if, and it'll look a bit weird if it's only on one side. So um, I'm going to decide what to do about that later. You can see it's bubbling out here as well. Uh, so this is where the, the error starts. So that's how far I'd have to rip back to. So yeah, a bit annoying. Um, but these things happen and it is only knitting. So my mum told me when she was teaching me to knit, you've never really knit something until you ripped it out at least three times. So, um, yeah. Oh, you're back, are you, Leah? Okay, let's move those out of the way so you can curl up. The other thing that I've been working on is my Jethro cardigan. Now, Jethro is a Tannis Fiber Arts uh, project and it uses crochet granny squares. So these are the ones that I've got left to join in. So we're getting to the construction stage. I have already joined the two front panels. Uh, so we have this panel and we have this panel. So they'll be the fronts. So I've used a continuous join as you go for granny squares 
to join them together. The granny squares I worked in West Yorkshire Spinners signature four ply held double that I had in stash and then the connecting yarn which will also be the ribbing and the sleeves is West Yorkshire Spinners Croft which is a DK yarn so holding finger weight double makes approximately a DK. Uh, so this is the the yarn that I'm using to connect it. Uh, this is the only skein that I've got left unwound and I've run out of the first skein that I was using to connect and uh, I've still got a way to go. I need five rows for this panel, so I'm part way along row three. So I've still got some more connecting to do. I'm a little nervous that I may have um, miscalculated how much of the grey I needed. Might have needed another skein. But we'll see how much is left once I've finished connecting the back um, together. It's going to be a bit of a, a baggy cardigan, which is fine. Uh, loose and baggy is always good because you can layer underneath it. Um, so yeah, so I may possibly need to get some more of the Croft DK in Colse, which is their colourway 212. Um, it's a commercial yarn, so I'm not overly concerned about dye lots and what have you. I mean, yes, you should ideally get the same dye lot with a commercial yarn like you would with a hand dyed yarn, but the chances of a different dye lot coming out the same colour are higher with a commercial yarn than with a hand dyed yarn because of the way that the systems are set up. So I'm not as concerned as I could be, but I do think I may have miscalculated how much I needed to buy because I only bought two and I think I maybe needed three or four. Um, so I'll, I'll relook at the pattern and work that out. Um, and we'll see how we go. Uh, so I'm gonna wind this one up after I finish filming and get the, the back finished connecting. Um, so that is, is actually all I've been working on by the uh, secret project uh, in September. It's been a bit of a weird month. Uh, obviously we came back from, from honeymoon in August and um, I've done a bit of catching up on stuff and laundry and unpacking and organising and then I'm, I was straight into to work in August and I work more hours during the summer than I do during the term times um, just because of the longer days and I do an, an additional day in the sum, for summer school. So yeah there's not been as much going on leading into September and then my days have changed at work for the time being as well. We've had a transfer of ownership there's all sorts of funny things and obviously I went and got my hair did. Um, so it's been a few things that have uh, interfered with with crafting um, and sort of doing some organising and sorting stuff out in the house and finding places to put all the wedding gifts, that sort of thing. They've all arrived now, so that's good. We have an air fryer now, just brilliant. That arrived yesterday. Um, so with all the sorting out and the arranging and that sort of stuff, there, there could have been more crafting happening, there just wasn't. I've also been quite tired this month as well, which I think is just uh, everything catching up on me from a busy summer. Um, so yes, we'll see how we go in October. There might be a bit more crafting going on, but I do still have some sorting out to do. I need to, to tackle the, the craft room because that um, is chaos at the moment. I haven't really cleared up from making the bridesmaids outfits and I do want to do some reorganising and rearranging and what have you in there as well because the idea of that room is for it to be part craft room, part home office, so that paperwork and stuff isn't all over the house. Um, so it needs a bit of rearranging, reorganising and faffing about in there. So that's going to take up a bit of time over the next few months. Um, but yeah, these, these things happen. Life does sometimes get in the way of crafting. Crafting is a hobby, ultimately. So it has to sort of fit around everything else. It is okay to have times where you're not making as much or well, you're not finishing as much. It is okay if a knitting project takes you a week to do, or if it takes you a couple of months to do, or even if it takes you over a year, it doesn't matter. As long as you're getting what you need to out of it in terms of, of relaxation time and refocusing time and time for yourself, and then you get the items that you want ultimately at the end of the day as well. Doesn't matter how long it takes, doesn't matter if you have a quiet season or seasons where you're making lots more, it's fine. Um, we are entering Stephen West Mystery Shawl Knit a long time, which in previous years I have participated in. I'm not participating this year, 
or at least I'm not planning on participating this year. Uh, I haven't got yarn for it or anything. Um, mostly because I want to focus on the projects that I've already got on the go and the project I have in mind for the Let Lopi that I bought, or Pluto Lopi rather, that I bought in Iceland. Um, so I want to focus on what I've already got rather than getting new stuff in. Um, it just sort of suits this year a little bit better for me. So thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I'd love to see you in my next video. In the meantime, there's this one here that may be of interest to you and I will see you soon. But until then, happy crafting and bye bye for now.